I wanted to go back to ACLs because you were the first one to explain the difference between a, a copra and a non copra And people have this idea, and I sent you a video of actually Joe Rogan talking with one of his guests about just just get the ACL surgery, just, mm. just get it fixed, mm. right? But we've seen and we've done and you've shown that you don't need an ACL mm. to perform athletic movement. Mm. Can you explain why and the differences and how you know if you're that person? Yeah. Well, this is big. Uh, yeah. Well, after, after your ACLs ruptured, uh, most people just go for surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the norm is in Australia. I think in Scandinavia, it's kind of 50-50. Fuck, it's Scandinavia. Yeah. What's up? That's what's up. That's what's up. But um, they come up with terms, cobras and non-cobras. Cobras are someone that can handle the demands of what they need to do without an ACL. Okay, because we know um, an ACL does is that anterior shear force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's your tibia, here's your femur, that anterior shear force. Um, your hamstrings can actually, if they're strong enough, they, they can help with that, that stability. Well, your hamstrings are a main part, but you've got your quads, you've got everything else. And we well. see that anterior shear force in landing, deacceleration, sprinting, uh, change of direction. Yeah, well, 70% of ACL is non-contact uh, happening from that, that landing, that change of directions, everything like that. Yeah? yeah, so that's a large eccentric load going through those quads. Yes. Yeah. Um, so find out if you're copa or non copa. All you got to do is just a real good rehab. If you if you go through or or a prehab, if you want to call it, if you go through a good exercise um, program of of let's just say three months, four months, five months, whatever you want to do, and the person is strong enough that they can land well, they can change directions, they can kick a footy, soccer ball, whatever they're doing, playing netball. Um, and they feel stable, they're a copa, yeah? A non-copa is just someone that's gone through that whole process, um, but gets to the point where they're like, number one, they're, all right, this is starting to give way a little bit. I'm not feeling like it's totally strong, okay? That's not only gonna affect them physically, but mentally as well. Yeah, if they're, if they're not confident, they're gonna get to a point, even if their knee's feeling pretty good, they're gonna be like, no, nah, I want surgery. So that's where ACL is not only a physical game, but a mental game. Mm. All right. So a cope is someone that's physically strong and mentally strong. They feel like they can go back and do whatever. Yeah. They're not worrying about their knee at all. They don't know, they don't know what injured, what one, what one of their knees is injured pretty much. Yeah. Whereas your non copa is someone that's gone through this whole rehab um, and just gets to a point where they're like, I feel like it's given way or I'm not confident or anything like that. Okay. A non copa has just done a really good prehab. Mm. Yeah. They're ready to go for surgery if they want to go for surgery. Um, and then they just, they're in a better state for when they come out. All right. The only reason why we can't find out if someone's a copa or non copa is uh, professional sport. They, mm. they don't have the time to mm. go through a three month rehab or prehab to find out that they still need surgery. Because of the risk. Because if they do, great. Mm. If, mm. For the non copas, it's great. Yeah. But it's the risk for the. Yeah. Sorry. For the copers, it's great. For the copers, it's, for the yeah. risk of the non-copers, yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah, and the only the only reason why a professional athlete will do that is if, say, if they're in um, if they're an older athlete, they've got one year to go, um, they don't feel like they're gonna get another contract, something like that, where they've got something else going on, um, that they're the ones that will just go for it. Fuck it, let's go for it. Yeah. So that's that's the only way that you're really gonna find out if you're a copa or non copa. Okay, there's a lot of people that are um, sub-elite or just recreational that will just go for um, the conservative approach where they don't get a reconstruction uh, because we know we can get as strong as possible around that knee that the, there's going to be stability, yeah? that there should be stability. Yeah, not everyone's going to have it, but there's a lot of people can try. Yeah? And a lot of people's goals change going through their rehab as well. Someone that's playing netball that's got, let's say a female playing netball that's got one kid, two kids or whatever, she might figure out that she doesn't actually want to play netball anymore. But she's just gone through a good rehab. She's got no ACL, but she can do whatever she wants. Yeah. She can still go for a run. She mm -hmm. can go to the gym. She can do a thing and keep moving. Uh, and a lot of these, these guys uh, that are working flat out, they're working away sometimes or doing whatever, they, they get to the end of their, um, their rehab without getting surgery and they're like, all right, I don't actually want to play footy anymore. I just want to keep working. I want to go to the gym. I want to do my thing. So there's lots of ways um, to go about it, but there's only, you've just got to really, you got to do it. 
you got to try it. you got to try it. But too many people see someone go down in sports and say, fuck, they're out for 12 months. they got to get a reconstruction. Right. right. It doesn't have to be that way. We've got to start to start to think about more, start to talk about this conservative approach a lot more, where there is people like that Kieran Richardson, I think he's from Perth, he's a physio. Uh, Mick Hughes talks about it a lot. There's different physios that are talking about it, but still the thing to do is... Let's go for surgery. Right, that's a tradition. That's that's the model that they that the uh, society has n- knows, right? Yeah. But I don't think this is the why I want to talk about it and bring it up because I think it's so important you explain that. Yeah. I don't think most people even know they can function without an ACL. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ca- do you apply this with other cruciate ligaments? Do you apply it to MCL, PCL, LCL? Can you apply the same principle or no? Um, Was it pent? Well, I think your ACLs, uh, ACL and PCL, uh, just won't heal as well as your MCL. If you rupture your MCL and you get in a good position, you don't you don't need to get reconstructed. It can heal on its own. Your ACL actually heals on its own over a long period of time, um, but you just don't do it as severe. Um, it's not as catastrophic doing your MCL, your LCL, or, or yeah, your MCL, your LCL compared to your ACL. ACL is the most catastrophic. Yep. Tier one, number yep. one. Yep. Okay, what we often see images portrayed is you know you'll see that. ACL almost like this fibrous band of tissue mm. like rotates around mm. and it just snaps off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Is that every case or is it like partial? Yeah, you can get partials, yeah. So partial can repair itself more easily? Yeah, definitely. It still takes time and you've got to have the good bulk surrounding it. With the full tear, mm. you're telling me, you know, there could be a couple millimeters in there where it's torn off each other. Mm. You're telling me that it can regrow onto itself. Yeah, there's been studies or cases of... Uh, ACL is rehealing. So someone that's, that's gone, amazing. someone that's gone from oh, a shit. conservative approach, and let's just let's go back to the female netballer. Um, she's gone conservative approach. She's just done good exercise. She's just gone back, um, just gone back to work, gone back for runs, gone back to the gym, do whatever she wants. Let's say two, three years later, uh, her knee starts hurt. Um, she decides to get an MRI, and they find in the uh, MRI scan that fuck, all right, this ACL is actually healed. She's like, yeah, I've got a complete rupture my ACL, and then the surgeons, like all the doctors or whatever, that ACL's healed. So there's cases of that. That's amazing, which is so interesting. But multi-year, we're talking like a slow oh, yeah. multi-heal. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, I, and that's like, wow, man. It, it's is it? Do you know what it's made from? Is it made from uh, collagen? Is it? Do we? Do you? Do you know? Just a ligament. Um, yeah. Fuck. That's okay. Because yeah. um, I'm like, I'm thinking like, because a lot of uh, fibrous tissue and connective tissue or connective tissue especially fascia it's, it's partly made of collagen and mm. so like I'm thinking like well I take a collagen protein mm. supplement I'm like alright how can we think about like other ways to help improve joint healing and mm. ligament and tendon healing like collagen supplementation but fuck there's no research it's just mm. a theory number two so yes it can apply to other cruciate ligaments in the knee okay great ACL's top tier number two uh, would be duration what is the duration yeah, and that's of a hard that one. Stage. Yeah. You well, said three months? Oh, of to find out if you're a copra or non copra? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd go three months. But then let's say you're a copra and you want to get back to sport. Mm-hmm. That's where there's not heaps of research. And you've got to be pretty much N equals one there. You've got to find out, all right, um, do they tick up the same boxes uh, as an ACL? Um, what's their running mechanics like? What's their acceleration, um, deceleration, max um, speed? What's their change of direction? You go through everything exactly the same. I would have a tendency to think you would tick pretty similar boxes because those boxes... You, you tick the exact same boxes, but it, I think a time frame um, is the hardest thing. Because, yeah. Because there's, there was that one study of that professional soccer player and I think he got back in nine weeks. Whoa. Maybe. Nine? Maybe, yeah. Maybe Bro. between nine and 12. Full contact. Yeah, playing EPL. Did he re-injure? Or is uh, it too, long, too short to say? No, this was ages ago. This was a while ago. Uh, I don't know if he... I don't think he re-injured because there was such a big... Um, there's so much talk about it that I don't think he re-injured. I think he played at a decent level over the next two seasons. This is professional soccer? Yeah, English Premier League, dude. Wow. But this is the thing, just to know that's even possible. Yeah. Just to... Even the possibility that, look, there is someone out there, there are people out there that we can go back to perform, yeah. recover, regenerate, and do our thing without... I mean, I don't know. I've never had a serious injury. I've never gone into surgery. How much is a, a knee surgery like that? How much? Yeah, do you know? Oh, it depends if you're on public, private. Like, let's just say, fuck. It can, if it's private, you can get up to probably more than 10 grand. I don't know. 
Yeah. It's, if, it's, if it's public, you're on a waiting list for a long period of time. Yeah. It just gets done. But if you want, all right, this is a surgeon I want. It's going to be expensive. It's a lot of money, man. And for a lot of people, like their sport is their life. And so yeah. they're like, they, they make ends meet and they yeah. just, they make it work. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is you can try another option that can save you and your family a lot of money mm. and puts less pressure on the medical system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that's the thing too. There's too many people going for ACLs that don't actually need an ACL. Really? Yeah, like if you just want to go for runs, go to the gym, yeah. just go to work, right. why do you need an ACL? Yeah, we know the uh, arthritis rates are super similar. So what what's the benefit of getting your ACL? You've got, you've got to go through, you got to take time off work. Um, it costs a lot of money. You're going through uh, some serious fucking rehab. Like there's a lot of things that there's a lot of cons that come with getting surgery. Mm. Yeah. The only con that I can think of with um, conservative approach is the unknown. But shit, look, you got to embrace that at the end of the day. Just yeah. the fact that you got to, I think you, I just encourage my client, remember, like, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. All right, yeah. you're a non copa Yeah. At least we tried. And now you've got a real strong knee. Yeah. And you're ready to go for surgery. You're better prepared. We've yeah. got a head start yeah. on the surgery. You'd probably be better prepared for surgery. You're probably going yeah. to, uh, we've started immediately. 100%. And that's what I try and get across to everyone. But the hardest thing is, the cycle is, all right, I've done my knee. I'll go to the doctor, I'll get an MRI. I'll go back to the doctor, he'll send me to um, a surgeon. The surgeon books me in for a surgery and that's it. There's no one, there's none of us in between. Sometimes there is if someone's... Oh, that's true. If someone's smart enough. They come into you after they already got yeah. the surgery. Yeah. Because that's what they think. Yeah. Coaching, physio, yeah. after surgery. Yeah. Guess what, motherfuckers? You don't have to. <laughs> no way. Have you been able to successfully intervene at any point like that? Uh, we have some clients, yeah, definitely. We've got, uh, we had two that was in the ACL class um, last year, middle of last year that didn't have ACLs and they just continued to found an ACL. Hell yeah. Um, some at the, just the other clinic I work at, but, but not, not enough. Nowhere near enough compared to what we get after they've gone for their surgery. What assessments are you looking at in that stage that you want to successfully tick to see that they're a COPA? How do you know? Uh, mainly it's just, again, you're looking at just your quad strength, your hamstring strength, relative, right to left. Um, you can even get them doing some drop jumps. You can get them doing some hops. You can um, see how they're accelerating, decelerating, see what the change of direction is like. How quickly would you do that? Uh, I reckon depending. If, they, if they're going, if they've got a good foundation, then you can progress that pretty quick but if it's someone that's never been in the gym before you're going yeah. to stay in that gym for a while for sure yeah, you're going to build them up until they're pretty confident um, in their knee and you're confident in how they're moving mm. once that happens you can start to get them onto some pogo some plyometric work once they're working well in their plyometric type stuff then you the demands of that are, are closer to running that type of stuff is the plyos you would incorporate a couple of weeks in a month in two months in mm. Good, good question. It's if if they're landing well. So I always do the absorption stage first. Landing, like how quickly are you going to do a, a landing work? So I'll do post? a tall, I'll do a tall to short pretty early. So I'll do that. Let's say with those who don't know tall to short. How how would you describe it? You start upright. Yeah, on your toes. Yep. Come down, land. Come down. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Athletic base. Simple. Yep. I'll um, I'll do that double leg pretty early. If 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 they're feeling confident in that, uh, progress that onto uh, a single leg. Yep. Yeah, progress that up onto a box, do the same thing nice. there. Then start to uh, go into the more plyometric stage where they're doing a pause box jump, counter movement jump, add some weight to the counter movement jump, yep. that type of thing. Just I love it because it's such a it's such a nice linear progression that just makes a it's structured, mm. makes a lot of sense. Mm. Like of how we're going from increasing load tolerance slowly, yeah. Yeah. complexity, motor control. And then the whole time you've got to be talking why are we doing this? If they're working on their um, on their absorption, which is pretty much your deceleration when you're going to change directions or something like that, yeah. So you're starting to work those quads eccentrically, and then say, why are we landing an athletic base? Because then we can go wherever we need to go. If you're talking them through what you're doing uh, in your exercises, it yeah. makes that translation onto the field a lot easier. Because if you're going through and you're 
get them to do all these exercises without explaining they're like why the fuck am I doing this why am I just landing like you gotta make them care yeah you've got to say all right this is how this relates to change of direction um if you're going through your running mechanics is how it relates to actual running like you've just got to explain stuff really well and people will stick with you for a long period of time yeah I think and the, the, one of the best one about the athletic base is like, all right, everybody can relate to it. Mm. Center of mass. Yeah. Try and push someone over standing up. Yeah. Drop your hips down. Try yeah. and push me over. Yeah. It's harder to push you over. Yeah. Ha- that translates in an unlimited fashion yeah. to day-to-day life and unle- athletic movement. Yeah. Like, it's easy. That's super effective. So you have those assessments. You have the landing, the pliers. I know you got to coach soon. We'll wrap it up soon. We have those, you have those assessments. And then what if they don't... Like how are you seeing it if they don't cope like what's that picture look like i think if they don't cope um it looks like number one they're mentally not subjectively i get that yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense um they they i reckon they can still do quite well in in a in a um quad test or a hamstring yeah. test um it's more when you start to get to let's say a single leg drop jump or if they've got to do um if they've got to do a single leg hop they're going to have massive differences because number one, they feel like their knee's going to give way um, and they don't have the confidence to to really do that jump. And some of them would say, I, I just don't feel confident doing this. How much do you think that is psychological? Is there, is there like you can intervene and be like, trust yourself, like that you can yeah. kind of talk them up a little yeah. bit? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you, you can definitely try that. But at the end of the day, if someone feels like their knee's giving yeah. way, I've, I've, I've got someone now that's, a year post and just because that person's not psychologically strong enough or she's the person's not just confident in her knee that's it makes it a lot harder Mm. so yeah definitely is a and it's a large part of an ACL rehab that's why we think of any ACL rehab is also a a brain type rehab too because we're trying to rewire the injury normally happened for a reason unless it was a unlucky contact or something like that yeah. it normally happens for a reason let's get to the cause yeah and so, let's work around that so we're doing a lot of reactive type stuff as well to try and rewire to get them in good position to get them confident again the what do you see is the biggest causes to knee injuries like acl injuries i reckon it's just bad preparation they don't have that foundation no one's in australia well most people in australia never been taught how to run change direction anything like yeah. that so I think it's having a real good foundation. If you've got a good foundation, uh, a lot of these injuries won't occur, especially the 70% that's non-contact. Yeah, if they understand how to change directions, if they're proactive rather than reactive, build a good foundation, have all these mechanics, they're going to be super unlucky if they do an ACL injury. Right. Uh, you know you've done the work. Yeah. You know you've done everything you can, yeah. but most people don't do it. No. Most clubs don't invest in yeah. coaching and SNC. No. No way. But most people have a physio or myo to rub them down. Yeah, yeah, to rub them down. Yeah, right. What's that doing? Well, we talked about it earlier, right? It's not doing nothing, but it's what could else we'd be doing? Yeah. What do you think is 